No tear on the shirt. You see, when people want to lie, there's something they forget that the expert would immediately know this is a lie. Like we have emails doing their rounds about the people of Ad. And they're showing you a massive, what looks like a massive skeleton. And two small people trying to dig on the side. And they say, people of Ad. And the Muslims are saying, subhanallah. Not realizing the Quran says there is no trace of the people of Ad. The Quran tells you that. Now when you look at it, you can go to hoax slayer.com and you will find the giant skeleton is a big hoax it's photoshopped you know what photoshopping means they just edit and cut so there's a skeleton all they got to do is take a man make him small as though he's digging right by the head and paste him there and to you it seems like the skeleton is big not that the man digging was made small Allahu Akbar what a joke May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the Muslims guidance. The point I want to raise from this false blood is if you have Iman, you will be able to detect what is false and what is not. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in tattaqullaha yaj'al lakum furqana O you who believe, if you are conscious of Allah, He will give you the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. He will give you the ability to distinguish between false and what is correct, what is true. So we need to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many times there are emails floating around. There is one which shows the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where that which has been sent is the grave of Jalaluddin al-Rumi in Turkey. Go and Google it and see. There are no photographs whatsoever of the Qabr Sharif of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nothing, null, not even one, nothing. It's sealed completely. It is covered with lead. There's nothing, no sign from inside or outside, null, nothing. Now people get excited and the emails do their rounds. Then they have another one, house of Khadija radiallahu anha, house of Fatima radiallahu anha, this. Where did they get all this from? Allahu Akbar. Imagine the latest camera with a color, with a color picture, with a resolution far greater than the passport photos we have. And they want to say this is a home in the 1400 years ago. Whose camera were they using? <laughs> Allahu Akbar. And we say, Subhanallah, we start crying and we forward the message and we write at the bottom, if you don't send it to 10 people, you're going to suffer. <laughs> A'udhu Billah. Wallahi, it's a fact. Look at this. And our Iman goes higher and lower because of photos that these people are making a fool of us of. We. And the Muslims are the biggest prey to this type of activity. One wonders why. Maybe shaitan operates in a very professional way when it comes to us because he knows we have Iman. May Allah safeguard us. Remember one thing. I always tell people, we want to look at signs. You know, they tell you, look at the clouds. It says Allah. When I was young, I'd seen Father Christmas in the clouds also. Wallahi, it's a fact. If, if, if the Quran, which is the living miracle, cannot move you, what do you think is going to move you? These false signs around you? Allahu Akbar. If Allah says, إِقْتَرَبَتِ السَّاعَةُ وَانْشَقَّ الْقَمَرُ When Muhammad sallallahu pointed at the moon, it split in two. If that doesn't raise your hair, you think a small beetroot written Allah on it is going to move you? When the Hindus use the same beetroot and say, no, it's written Om on it. Wallahi, it's a fact. So if that was evidence that your deen is correct, then what about all the Hindus and Christians and everyone else who've brought even more clear evidence to show you they've also got rutis and they've also got, uh, you know, tomatoes and so on where their God's names are written. So if that is the evidence of a religion being correct, where you're supposed to look for tomatoes and rutis and eggplants and so on and, and, and vegetables, then what happens to the Quran? Are we putting it on one side? Look at how shaitan comes to us. We have the most powerful gift. When you read and understand the Quran, you will shake. The true believers are those whom when Allah is mentioned, they tremble. And when the verses of the Quran are recited, it increases their belief and conviction. And they are solidified. This is the Quran. But with us, we will read the Quran khatam after khatam after khatam. It hasn't moved us at all. We're still in the clubs. We're still in the casinos. We're still on drugs. We're trying to justify the use of weed. Astaghfirullah. And we're trying to justify everything else that it has no harm in it. And the Quran doesn't move us. Then someone shows us a small little piece of potato. And we say, Subhanallah. For the first time, rather than all the verses of the Quran, which is the living miracle. Allahu Akbar. 
and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where are we? Where are we? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding of the Quran. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقَفَالُهَا Are they not going to try to understand and ponder over the verses of the Quran or are their hearts sealed by its locks? Maybe the hearts are sealed by the locks, so we need to repent. We need to ask Allah's forgiveness. Yes, there are signs that Allah sends to us, but those signs should make us closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not fall prey to people's dreams and to this and to that. No, we should understand what have I done and you done to educate ourselves regarding the message that Allah has sent in the Quran. Today I was speaking to a brother. I told him, brother, the biggest gift you can do yourself is to try and understand Allah's message to you and that is the Quran. Then talk about everything else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors.